And here in this very icy day, only a few weeks from Christmas, in Port Melbourne is the new Nissan Qashqai. Surprisingly, it's a good package. Well, I don't say surprisingly, but it is a good package. The matrix lights on the top two models, the 19-inch wheels. I think Nissan have really done their homework and provided you like this corporate front it's not a bad little crossover. Each of the quilted seats takes an hour to make. It's kind of the automotive equi equivalent of a cigar being rubbed on the thigh of a nubile wench. It's not bad back here. The room is a little bit tight. My knee is against the seat in front. Now, if I turn the engine off, this seat will slide back because it's got easy access. So you'd want the people in the back to be aware of that. There's plenty of headroom, despite the fact that this has a sunroof. It doesn't open, which is a little bit of a shame. And if you want something a little bit more intimate, you can certainly shut that shade. We've got privacy glass in the side, of course. So the back is actually reasonably comfortable and you're sitting far enough up that you get a decent view out the windscreen. And Nissan have really upped their quality. The steering wheel is wrapped in leather. The seats are leather, the quilted seats. And like the other new models they've released, the new SUVs, a lovely wide 12.3 inch screen here, 12.3 inch screen here, and a 10.8 inch heads up display. Try saying that three times really fast. We don't have the active rear view mirror that we've got in the other models. This is just a normal old electrochromatic mirror. It's a nice place to be. We've got a wireless charger and it's fast. It's 15 watts. We've got twin zone climate control and we've got hardware buttons, proper buttons for the infotainment system, plus some permanent software buttons up the side. And the Bose sound system is something to behold. The day started with just trying to get out of Melbourne, which in this tight street, believe me, is no easy feat. But the reversing camera is absolutely brilliant. So I'll put my massager on. Lovely. Oh, let's see if I can get out of here without driving around Melbourne is always such a pleasure. I've got a heads up display. I've got a lovely big driver's display. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is to have plenty of data available to you, but not too much, because you don't want that. One thing I always complain about with all of these cars is the CVT. It's okay, but it's never going to be as good as a proper torque converter automatic. While we're stopped, let's have a look at the car. You can see how shiny this piano black is, and I can imagine at the right time of day, that's gonna shine straight in my eyes. I'd close the overhead blind if I was gonna wipe out the, <laughs> the other GoPro. Trying to drive around trams gives me the heebie-jeebies. One of the big things that, I'm gonna turn that on, off, off, or the stop start, I should say. Don't know why people insist on putting that in cars. The Pro Pilot is something that Nissan has made a big song and dance about, and that's the thing that brings together the suite of driver and safety aids in order to make it safe to drive, and it's particularly useful on the highway. But it's also got a queue function, so it's useful in town as well, which is something we quite like. And the buttons on the steering wheel, they're clearly laid out. The paddles at the back are easy to get used to, and that's on all the models. Now I asked, just out of interest, just in case you're wondering, I did ask why the Apple CarPlay was wireless but the Android Auto wasn't and I'm told it's a licensing thing. The Bose sound system is 
absolutely fabulous. Now the other models don't have quite as good a sound system and you can certainly pick the difference but not so much that you'd really care. The engine, a 1.3 litre four cylinder engine. So it's got a turbo putting out about 110 kilowatts. You might think that's a little bit anemic and I certainly expected it to be anemic, but it isn't. The drive modes help no end, but mostly these little crossovers are going to be used around town anyway. They're going to be used for city chores and you know we all think that we want to go on a road trip, but we never do. This could handle a road trip, no question in my mind. And I did ask, because the cabin is so quiet, I did ask if these had active noise cancelling. It's spookily quiet. But no, it's just down to good engineering. And over the last few days, we've been driving in some pretty atrocious weather. And despite the fact that this is a front wheel drive, it hasn't let us down at all. I did ask if there was a all wheel drive model coming and there are no plans for it. Although I understand there is one available elsewhere. Because this is a Japanese car, the indicators are on the correct side for Australia, which is good. And the top model has got all the usual things. The big thing that I spoke about outside the car are the matrix lights. And the matrix lights are those clever ones that I'm always banging on about. Every brand calls them something different, but they dim just little individual cells so that just the car in front is not dazzled, but everything else is at high beam or at full beam. And it makes such a difference to your drive. It makes a huge difference to your drive. And the new model is also built on the new platform. It's the Alliance platform. The Alliance, the Mitsubishi Nissan Renault Alliance brings with it the ability to put development over multiple models. And Nissan was very proud of the fact that this very small crossover has sold 130-ish thousand, five million over the 20 years. It started the crossover section and it's such a tightly fought segment of the market. So now I'm going to turn on my, so I've got ProPilot on now. It's set. So now I can see in the heads up display, I've got ProPilot and Smart Cruise Control working. The surfaces are all nice and soft except for the tops of the back doors, which are a little bit hard. They're doing a Volkswagen thing and saving some money in the back seat where you're unlikely to have people. Now at this speed, the CVT has got me doing about 1200 RPM. The fuel economy is reasonably good. And there may well even be other models to come an electrified version next year, perhaps? Who knows? The model range is between low 30s to about 47,000 and some change. And that's quite a big range. There's a between four and $5,000 difference between each trim level. I'd like to see the matrix headlights standard across the range, and I'd like to see all of the features in here standard across the range. Only the top models have this big screen. The very bottom one is a little bit bereft. Stop next to your bay that you want. And so now tell it we. We've used a lot of these automated parking systems and this one of course you can adjust minutely with the arrows in the infotainment system. Now unfortunately that can make things incredibly complex. I mean what's the point of having to pull up beside a parking space with someone honking their horn behind you and then having to make minute adjustments? The other systems that we've used you just pull up beside, press the button, take your foot off the break and the car does everything for you. This one I think is just really far too complex to be useful. That's it, that's all for Nissan Qashqai. 
ideal for most people. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Just let's get rid of that CVT. He knows who I'm talking about. As always, hit like, leave a comment, and there to subscribe.